If anime has taught me anything, it's that anything can be achieved with two things. The power of friendship and never giving up. Oh, and having cosmic level power. Sailor Moon, leader of the Sailor Scouts, and Seiya Pegasus, champion of Athena. I make this and it's my job to go over their origin and skills to see who would win in this episode of The Debate Club. Long ago, in a galaxy far, far away. Oh, wait, that's the wrong one. H here we go. 2,000 years ago, there was the Moon Kingdom, ruled by Queen Serenity and her daughter, Princess Serenity. This mother-daughter duo were pretty much guardians of the galaxy and stuff, along with other protectors who are all named after planets. They protected the galaxy from all manner of things, from Frost Queens to Old Queens and even... Chaos Queens. Ooh. Well, in one of their battles against the queen named Beryl, they were completely wiped out, and the princess, along with her boy crush Prince Endinium, were slain. Not wanting to lose her only daughter, the queen used her cosmic powers alongside the silver crystal to reincarnate everyone who died in the attack, to be born in the future. And in a couple thousand years, she was reborn as Usagi Sukuna. Usagi, or Serena if you're a dick viewer, what? was your unassuming normal girl, and does normal girl things like hang out with friends, crush on the cool guys, and cries. A lot. Then, one of Queen Serenity's cats showed up and gave her the rundown on who she really was. She was given a transformation device and with one phrase, she transformed into the one, the only, the OG magical girl herself, Sailor Moon. Huh. You know, I always wondered why she was named Moon and not like any other planet. Though I guess that would mean she stands out. And stand out she most certainly does, cause out of all the Sailor Scouts, Sailor Moon possesses the most power out of all of them. With her transformation, she gains superhuman strength, can shoot various types of magical blasts, and can even use her own tiara as a projectile. And if that's not crazy enough, she can use her hair buns to emit supersonic waves that can put even the toughest beasts down. If she wasn't already obnoxious enough. She draws her powers from the Silver Crystal, which is basically the Infinity Stone of the Sailor Moon universe. It basically grants Sailor Moon near cosmic powers, which makes sense since it was used to bring people back from the dead. It can also heal wounds, create shields, repel evil energy. It can even spread its power throughout an entire planet. God damn! Talk about power. However, overuse of this crystal is dangerous as it drains the life force of the user. Though when Sailor Moon uses it, it doesn't seem to have that drawback. How convenient. When she isn't wielding God Rocks, she wields the Moon Stick. Despite being the least creative name for a wand, this is her main weapon of choice, channeling the Silver Crystal's power to shoot magical pupils at her enemies, perfect for keeping at bay the Nega Force. Whoa, 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 you can't say that! What? Nega? As in negative? Basically, Dark Forces from the Evil Queen, Beryl, which can take forms of many things. They can be anywhere. Teacher, your friends. They could be any one of us. It could be you. It could even be me. It could even be. Aw, oh, come on. That one was practically a layup. Throughout her adventures of leading the Sailor Sension, she acquired even more power, upgrading to the more powerful Super Sailor Moon. Really consistent with the creativity here, guys. Which gives her the ability to completely shatter her foes with cosmic moon energy. And with the Holy Moon Chalice, she becomes the best, the unstoppable, eternal Sailor Moon. You see, now that there is a final form name. Better, stronger, and with angel wings, eternal Sailor Moon can contest with the galaxy's strongest threats. She can resist mind control, being erased from existence, erase others from existence completely, destroy universes, and has even destroyed a mirror universe. The mirror universe basically contains all the power from those mirrors. Basically, creating an entire, well, universe. And we're talking about people who are already threats to the universe already, like Queen Nehelenia? Me. Or Sailor Galaxia, who is, by all intents and purposes, a god of destruction and chaos. So basically, my ex. <laughs> Why 
When's the last time you ever had a date? <laughs> she can fly to the center of the galaxy in seconds, and can even survive inside this weird black space alien thing who's basically a black hole of evil energy. Man, old meatball head here sure is a lot more badass than I thought. But what if I told you she can become even more powerful? Uh-huh. Well, with the Lombada Crystal, she can become Sailor Cosmos. In this form, she can control the very reality itself. Time, space, and even abstract concepts like love and hate. She's basically a god. All wrapped up in a 14-year-old schoolgirl. How's that for girl power? Hell, even literal chaos itself can't kill her. However, Usagi isn't one to instigate fights. She would rather talk things out and not cause universal destruction. I mean, I suppose you can say that her young age might mean she's inexperienced, but I mean that's the same as letting a kid drive a car. It's cool in concept, but oh boy the consequences. Also, the moon crystals, while being a source of limitless power, can be corrupted and in some instances even broken. But if the universe is in danger, she will be there to protect all. Whether it's fighting evil in moonlight, or winning love by daylight, you can be assured that she'll never run from a real fight, because she is the one named Sailor Moon. You suck. Oh! You're going down, Soy Sight! Huh? Tell me, what would you do if one day some guy holding a baby told you that you needed to raise an army to protect said baby? That's an oddly specific question. Well, in the case of Mitsu Masakido, his solution was grab as many orphans as he can and send their asses to Greece to train and become protectors of that baby. That's an oddly specific answer. One of these lucky orphans was a young boy named Seiya Tenma and he was trained by this chick named Marin to become Athena's royal guards. He trained tirelessly day and night to become the true knight of Athena. But first, he needed to harness the mystical power called Cosmos. You know the start of the universe? The Big Bang? Yeah. As it turns out, after the detonation of said explosion, every living being was essentially made of Cosmos. From the ground below you to the infinite sky above, and even more. Seiya trains a harness Cosmo by burning, being able to replicate the power of the Big Bang itself. You know, we usually start small and then work our way up to ask our own bullshit, right? Relax, you only ever use a micro amount of it. Yeah, but we're talking about the Big Bang, the explosion that started the universe? Even if it's a micro amount, I mean, that's gotta be an insane amount. Well, it's enough to give him superhuman strength, speed, the ability to fly, punch over 1 million times in seconds, and deliver the most diabolical Azuna drop you've ever seen. He would use his powers to take on other saints in the Galaxian War, which no isn't an actual war, but instead a tournament to test bronze saints in order to receive the Sagittarius Golden Claw. So they're like badges of honor? Well, while the armor itself doesn't carry any real powers, their user can channel their cosmos through it, doing so amplifies their already immense power, as well as you know, protecting their vital points. Makes sense, the higher the rank from the claw, the stronger the saint. But with each upgrade comes the evolution of Seiya's more powerful trait, his senses. Much like us humans, we have access to five core senses, sight, hearing, touch, taste, and smell. But for Seiya, he has access to far more senses. Each new sense gifts him with more power, more speed, the power to predict his opponent's moves, and manipulate things to the atomic level and it can allow him to travel through universes, which is how he was able to survive a trip to hell and injure Hades, you know, the god of hell. And then there's the senses that elevate Seiya to the realm of gods. I'm not kidding. With the last two senses, Miraculous and the Ninth Sense, Seiya has the power to match gods of cosmos, harnessing the power of miracles. You know, that phenomenon in which an impossible becomes possible, and while he can only tap into a fraction of the ninth sense, that fraction is still part of an infinite power source. 
beings like Apollo can use this to enact their wills upon reality itself. Literal gods. And he just walks up to them and says, Come at me, bro! <sighs> From Morphin to God Puncher. I wouldn't be an anime protagonist without that. He's resisted mind control, extreme temperatures, being erased, taking hits from god-level opponents, and thanks to his 8th sense, he can exist as a soul and resurrect his body if it were to be destroyed. And remember when I said he survived hell? Well, in this version of hell, its law states that any alive being in there will die instantly if they're inside it, but say his 8th sense simply negates that because it rewrote that law, and when in full power, he can achieve the power of infinity and actually punch with the power of the Big Bang, and then so. These crossed universes created by Hades that consist of billions of galaxies in short time. And then there's the time he destroyed Poseidon's mainstay pillars. These pillars are protected by Poseidon's cosmos, which are powerful enough to reach the ends of the universe. And here I thought punching Big Bangs were his peak. He does suffer from your typical never give up attitude which, while admirable, does lead him to overexert himself and he mostly ends up in the floor more often than not. However, all that means for his opponents is that you better hit him with everything you got, because as long as he's still breathing and his Cosmo burns, you can expect Saint Seiya to always fight in hopes of a miracle. And it's time! Both commands are ready and it is time to put the debate to rest. Uh, who are you? I'm Seiya Pegasus, and you're the reason all these monsters are here, huh? Uh... Well, I won't let you get away! Uh, quit running, coward! Uh, what is your deal? Can you make it quick? There, is that quick enough for you? In the face again? Are you serious? This could be the end of this. 
Well, that escalated quickly. This matchup was a headache to figure out. Both Moon and Seiya were astronomical in terms of powers and feats that honestly the fight could have gone either way. However, in the end, Seiya just had enough of an edge to squeak out a victory. Seiya had more combat training than Moon, so he could more or less keep up with whatever attacks Moon throws at him. Both are around the same speed, but Seiya's fifth sense can help him predict incoming attacks. Sailor Moon's crystals might hold godlike powers within, but compare that to Seiya's senses and the gap begins to show. Both can in theory rewrite reality to their will, but there's more to it. Both can only ever do this by overpowering the others with their own power, meaning that the stronger one usually wins out more often than not. Seiya has been seen overpowering other saints of equal power more times than not. And while it states that the crystal Sailor Moon and crew uses have limitless power, there are instances where they have been destroyed or even corrupted, whereas the infinite cosmos the saints use have actually shown to be infinite. Both at their peak can shatter universes, rewrite reality, and even resist deletion before. However, it was the source of their powers that made the difference. Sailor Moon, while powerful in her own right, her power does come from the crystal she uses. She wouldn't be able to do all of her godlike things without them. Whereas Seiya has been able to punch big bangs ever since he was a kid, and then, after awakening his senses, he can still use them. In the end, while both had insane powers and hacks, better training, infinite cosmos, and overwhelming tenacity, won him this bout. <laughs> Say ya later, Moon. I want a divorce. The winner is Seiya Pegasus. Yeah.